My order from Allied Electronics has arrived, so let's see what all is in here. Pretty big box, but not a whole lot in it. All just power resistors and accessories for mounting them. So I got some mica washers. That's what goes or will go in between the sections of the new power resistors. Just adds a little protection insulation. Also got some new end caps. I don't know if I'm going to need them because I can probably reuse the existing one, but just cost a few cents, so what the heck, why not? Now these boxes must be, yeah, those are the big power resistors. So I got two of each, one for this 630TS and one for my other set. adjustable type. It's got a little label on there. Let's loosen that up and try to read it. Remove that assembly. Yeah, it'd be a good idea, otherwise you're going to get very good conductivity. Always loose and screw before moving. Do not over tighten. All right. All well, sounds like very good advice. So the idea is you got this metal collar here, and there's a dimple, and that dimple will press against the exposed windings and provide conductivity. So I need to pick an end, put my ohm meter on one end, and put it on the slider, and position it to get exactly the resistance I want for both this one, which should be 1360, and the other one, which should be 230. Yeah. There's the other one. Notice that these are smaller than the existing one, which is only rated for 17 watts on one section, and I think 10 on the other, whereas these are rated for 25 each. I guess that's just advances in ceramic technology that these can withstand more heat. See, they're about half the diameter of the existing one. But the length, as I had hoped, is perfect. So put these side by side, put one of those mica washers in between, and put a mica washer at either end and reuse the existing mounting screw and those will fit in there just fine and hook these wires up right to these lugs well not the outside lugs but one of the existing lugs and then the slider and then the exposed lug I think I'll slide a little heat shrink tubing over that just to prevent anything from shorting against it so step one I need to get the old one out solder sucker and a soldering iron cranked up all the way so this is going to take a bit of heat I imagine you may have noticed the insulation they use on these windings I believe this is a special type of fiber that can withstand high heat not break down. So it's one thing to have power resistors that get hot, but it's another to take that power resistor and put it inside of a metal, a sealed metal box. Not exactly good circulation. Not entirely sealed, I suppose. I guess it was open a bit at the bottom, but uh, not so much at the top. Noticing when I suck the solder out of these, when I push on the leads, yeah, they do just bend that easily. Huh. This doesn't really matter since it's bad, but 
if you press on these, they do deflect quite easily, and then it starts chipping off the ceramic. So be careful when you work with these old resistors if you want to salvage them. Save this for a souvenir. So where do you suppose the break is in there? I don't know, but uh, certainly not the first bad big old power resistor I've encountered. I would imagine it's, there's probably corrosion deep inside, ceramic coating. So, these end mica washers and caps seem to be in pretty good shape, so I think I can... Oh wait, but one issue. <laughs> it's so much bigger. I'm glad I did order some new ones. It's so much bigger that it really doesn't make contact with the new ones. And I bet these end caps are too big as well. Yeah, alright. So, I'm glad I ordered up end caps and washers because the old ones just are too big. So here's the smaller versus the old one. Obviously that fits much better. I guess I should have ordered two more of those. I didn't realize there was an end cap that would go. I need two end caps of each. I thought the end cap was one at one end, not at both ends. Oh well. And I suppose I'll need three micro washers. One for each end and one in the middle. So, see these micro washers are also a more appropriate size. So you get mica. And then the end cap all fits very nicely together and then I'm going to use the old screw and nut one end will cinch up something like that So let's see, the higher resistance one should go on the left, so that's this guy. And then a mica. And then the other guy. Well, some more. Slide them onto the shaft, make the life a little bit easier. Like that. And then the end cap.
Right. I just need to get out a no meter and adjust these for the right resistance and hook the wires back up. So I'll use the outside lug on this guy, slide this over to the right spot, hook this lead up to it. This lead will go to the fixed and this last one will go to the slider. Or maybe I'll have the outside one just for symmetry's sake and go to the fixed lug and put this guy to the slider. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I'll definitely do that because the two outer wires are solid and not that flexible and the two inner ones are stranded so they move around a lot easier so I'll put the stranded on the movable solid wire on the fixed. Alright, let's see about getting this first one adjusted. So we want 1360. It's 1500 total, so I'm thinking 1360 must be close to a far end. You need to put a bit of pressure on it to make good contact when you're measuring the resistance. Almost. It's going to be virtually all the way at the other end. Oh, I think that's it. Not quite. So yeah, I'm going to end up being almost as far over as you can possibly go. Oh well. As long as it works. Alright, I'd say that's close enough to 1360. No, I need to adjust the other one. Here's what I finally ended up with. This is after I made my adjustments as best I could and I also put heat shrink tubing over the two unused terminals. So this side should be 230, I got 224. Other side should be 1360. And I got... 1342. Now I got those sliders over as far as I could physically get them. So in hindsight, this actually wasn't that great an idea. I thought I would have more play. Or what I should have done is gone up one size larger on each. I think the next increment on the 250 is maybe 330 or something like that. And the 1500 might be 2000 or 2200. Then I'd have more play. But remember, the more you slide that slider over, the less wattage rating you have. You need 17 watts on this side, so if I would use like a 4700 ohm adjustable, the time I slid it over so far, I would cut the wattage rating down so far. It wouldn't be, uh, it, it would burn out. So, if I had to do this again, I think what I would do is I would buy a fixed 250 and a fixed 1500 25 watt, install them, and Put a small resistor in parallel and whip out that parallel resistance formula and figure out what do I need to put across a 1500 ohm to knock it down to 1360. 
and the bulk of the current will go through the main resistor. So the smaller resistor, say it's like 10K, you probably get away with like a 2, 3, or 5 watt resistor and maybe hide that behind this one. But hey, it is what it is. These should work just fine. I went ahead and worked out the math for resistor values in parallel that would equal the original resistor specifications. So I was saying if I had to do this again, instead of using those expensive adjustable power resistors, I would go with a fixed power resistor. For example, to get three, 1360 ohms, if you take 1500 ohm in parallel with 15,000 ohms, you get pretty darn close. Most of the power will be dissipated in the lower value resistor. So the larger valued one, 3 watts or better, will work fine. For the 230 ohm resistor, 250 ohm in parallel with 2700 ohm. Now the original spec for this was only rated for 10 watts. So for the one in parallel, 2 watts or better will be just fine but I would go with a 25 watt because it will be the same size as this guy and they will fit side by side on the original mounting hardware just fine.